Hey everybody, welcome back to E4 Art of War featuring myself, Northern Line, as well as Quill, Mathis, and Arumba. Say hello. Hello. Hey. Hey there. In before I get this right by Rebels. Let's begin. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna break all my alliances now. Oh, hey, there's the coalition. Okay. Sorry, one sec. Let's take a look at this. Uh, oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> I got uh, two stack or three stacks of 12 and a stack of 10. My army's 16k. All right. Oof. It's fine. <laughs> what? How, hold on, I'm being destroyed in this very first war. Oh, because of course they're spawning with god generals. Three threes versus my one one. I have a sweet mission. Oh yeah, your life is bemanis. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I had I had the mission to insult Orissa. Took care of that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah Orissa <laughs> sucks, dude. I don't know what Fuck the them. AI was thinking in the first few episodes. <laughs> Arissa is no longer a valid rival for me for some reason. Right, I'm gonna blow my money. I'm gonna see what going into debt is like. Sounded fun when you did it. That's a really good time. Conquer South Kanara. Hmm. So I'm at six out of four relationships now, which isn't too bad. I don't know where South Kanara is. South. Kanara, where are you? I've this never done this down. yet. Having vassals with like claims and stuff. Be interesting to try pressing their claims. Mm -hmm. You scared? A little bit, yeah. Kinda kinda nervous. You should be. It's your first time. <laughs> it is it is, yep. This revolt risk is pretty damn high. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> this is so much worse than uh, overextending like this is so much more dangerous in this version. Yeah, I like wow, it. Nash it's good. One of these provinces has nationalism at 20. Can I roll like Ooh, a better awesome. leader? How did that even happen? I need to core oh. this crap, don't I? All right, my king is awesome. Well, I did take five provinces, but it's only 20% war. 20% overextension. Ooh, I didn't see. That was, uh, was five troops there. Five regiments, I should say. Ew, lost 12 war score. All right, I'm going to wipe out all these rebels because my king general is a 3-4. Oh, yeah. So one thing I did was that uh, if you can get the revolt risk or the unrest, I got to start calling it unrest, mm -hmm. for one of the rebel factions to 0%, then it just disappears. Even if it's at like 90%, it just, it just goes away. Oh, because it can't possibly go up anymore, but it's interesting that it... Resets right. progress. Maybe it saves it invisibly behind the scenes. No, probably it does. Not. It, it does. does. Yes. But so then, if you get ticks, it back, it comes back. Then it ticks down. Oh, yeah. All right. So I like you, it. So, like, if you have ninety percent, and then you get it down to zero, and then the total revolt risk is like negative twenty. I'm uh -huh. pretty sure. I haven't been able to really test it yet, but I'm pretty sure that it has a twenty percent chance of ticking down by five percent. Oh, nice. Mm. Because, because I've like had troops there, and then moved them away, and then brought them back, and it remembers the percentage, but the, it just does disappear from the map. Which is interesting. My uh, my heir is a 5-4-3, so he's Ooh. probably going to die. Ooh, oh, yeah. Baby. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Ooh, baby. Everywhere I'm getting, like, river crossings and <laughs> jungle. Fortunately, my, my general's pretty good, but he's got zero maneuver, so... Dim river crossings. What are you ooh baby in about over there? Quill's heir. Oh, oh. He's strong. Okay. And I'm going to go and kill all these rebels off. Whew. Good. Unfortunately, I think he's going to reset one of my cores. Just to clarify, it does take until you hit 100 for the rebel uprising to actually rise up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are still event-based rebellion. Okay. But it's not like 85 gives it a, like an 8.5% chance or something. No. But around like 80 or 75 is when you'll get an alert at the top of the screen saying that they're about to rebel. Okay. Then yeah, at 100 is when you get like, well, like me, I just got four stacks of rebels. But it actually turned out to be less bad than I expected. Certainly less bad than the rebellion I had, I think, when I was playing as Ethiopia. Yeah, I'm uh, noticing some annoyance there. Harar Mora. So all despite right. all my aggression, I only have two people in the coalition, which is pretty good. Despite all your rage? Yeah, I was going to go there, too. Still just a rat in a cage? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, 
before you reset my corn process. So should I make a march? Yeah. Marches are cool. I have a, I have a country called Zazu, which reminds me of like the Lion King. Mm -hmm. He was the bird, right? Yeah. The advisor. Yep. So. Okay, so the vassal Zazu will become a march. Doesn't pay any taxes, and I cannot annex them, but they'll get 25% national manpower, 20% manpower recovery, 30% land and naval force limits, and 20% fort defense. Now, if you cancel a march, you lose stability, right? It's like breaking a royal marriage? I think so. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I haven't tested this yet, but I think you cannot improve relations with them more than 100. Mm. Oh, interesting. So you can't get them up to like 200 and then just convert them and then annex them, I think. It's only 8%. That's going to pop right How much troops does Vaginagar have? All right. My national unrest is now in negative 4.58. Thank God. Although, my northern Thai patriots are still increasing in count. But... Only 4,000 men, really? That's all you have? Or no, no, target. no. That's all that Vaginagar has. Mm. Ooh, strike now. Juicy. Well, they are an ally of, of somebody I can declare war on, so I wanted to know what kind of power I'd have to be dealing with. Maybe you should play a couple of episodes as Vaginagar first. <laughs> <laughs> Destroy them. <laughs> no, fucking Arissa like, allied up hardcore with like a bunch of people. Boy, maybe you should have done teleport that. Teleport around a bit. <laughs> no, they're not. I wouldn't say they're strong people. They're just a bunch of people. Right, so I have four countries in a coalition against me. Four. Yeah. That's not that many. You need to piss more people off. Yeah. Even my allies are like, dude, slow down, man. <laughs> right, hey, was uh, do you do you know why some some cores are faster than others? No, because that never used to be the case. Like costs varied. Oh, uh, claims, claims. No, that makes it cheaper, but it might make it faster. Cause like I've got one that's like really shooting ahead. I I took all five. I cored them all at the exact same time. They're all one base tax. One's at sixty one percent, and all the others are at about twenty five to thirty. I don't know why. Hmm. Provincial unrest. Maybe the autonomy. That's gotta be it. No, be no, they all. They all have crap autonomy. I'll wait. I think I'll wait to go to war. Oh, it's the it's the culture group. That's got to be it. Higher is the same culture group as my primary culture, so it's much faster to core. Interesting. I did not know that. And I, there isn't anything in the tooltip about it. So if I decrease autonomy here... What would that do? Yes. I'm trying to <laughs> count... Oh, it's nice they total... I, I was all worried I'd have to count up my total unrest situation in this province. But no, on the mouse over, it lets me know. Like, it's 0% and then in parentheses... Negative 9.06. So even if I, I take a 10% <laughs> boost. I specifically asked for that so many times. I am so, so happy that they did it. Paradox must love you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm starting to starting to think maybe they got... They, they need to hire you as a UI designer is actually what needs to happen. That would be pretty cool. Or at least maybe not... Like People have been saying this, and I think I, I would love the job. Not that they need to pay me, but let me beta test shit, and I will tell you what is wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what should be different or better. And, and you know, it's funny because um, somebody, um, when they were doing their stream on Art of War release day, somebody had brought up the question. Um, you know, Roomba says that the uh, the little sprites on the end of the battle screen are kind of superfluous and don't really help add anything to it. What do you guys think about that? And they're like, <laughs> wow, it's our game. <laughs> He's not to his opinion, but it's our game and they're awesome. And, and that's, they're right. But like, it's just funny because... I care more about the interface, like the usability, like how does the player yeah, interact like, with the game? Who cares? About and those to me, like those those sprites don't add anything. They don't. They don't make the game any better. No, but they look cool. Mm -hmm. I never said they did. As long as they don't hurt, who cares? But like, but like all the other stuff was way, way more significant. Like this autonomy stuff, and like just being able to have the total number of revolt risk. It's so useful. You don't need a calculator to play the game anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, hire me, Paradox. I'll beta test your stuff. I'd love <laughs> to. I'll do it for free. Didn't There's realize the active missionary really raises unrest. Yeah, like my six. It always uh, increased revolt risk. Mm -hmm. It. I think it's being able to see the actual implications for that that make me uh, 
worried? Yeah, because the revolts, you know how it has like the projection of when the next big revolt should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, for the one with a uh, an active missionary, it's 7.1 years. Almost exactly the same provinces in the uh, different revolts. It's 111.1 years. The only difference mm -hmm. is that there's no active missionary in one of them. Well, one of the only differences. But the good thing is the missionary won't take that long. So it doesn't matter. You know, like... like if, a, if, if the revolt risk is like less than... Is more than seven years, you'll have that, that problem fixed before true. you even have a chance. Yeah. Is a... Like, um, building rebellions, do they ever shrink naturally like the percentage monthly based on your like national unrest or something we were or talking one... about that a minute ago if, if you bring the revolt risk negative then it goes away and then it ticks down all right so it's not like once they get the 80 percent, it, it stays there correct okay you just got to get it down to zero either through reduce like increasing autonomy or parking what you need to do always do this park your troops in provinces that have revolt risk okay yeah that makes sense that's where they need to live, because each regiment will reduce revolt risk by 0.25, up to a maximum of 5. So a 20 stack will reduce revolt risk by 5%. All right. Re revolt risk in that province, like provincial unrest, or they're yep. building... Okay, yeah, yep. that's what I thought. All Which right. has a direct 5% impact on the overall chance of the rebellion building. Okay. That's where I get it. That's where I get it now. Nice. Picking up what we're putting down? A little bit. I, I apologize for asking so many questions about it, but, you know, <laughs> rebels are the, you know, the most annoying part of the game they, most of the time. How countries break. Plus, mm -hmm. it's good for the viewers. I'm sure many of them have a lot of questions. True, yeah. Hell, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize how hard you basically can't vassalize people outside your religious group. Which so. is the way it always was. Yeah, but I'm used to like thinking of it in terms of like Christians and then like not being able to vassalize Muslims, but I didn't realize like everyone had the issue. Mm-hmm. Because I only play in like Europe mostly, so. And you can protectorize people. Yeah, so I've never liked protectorates. Mm. Never really used them. Inflation just going up. Do you what have a gold mine? That's what I'm looking for right now. Yep, I do. That's why. That's why I have so much money. All right, that makes sense. Nothing to complain about then, oh. is there? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. I'm sure I'll find something. I should let. Oh, I should reduce inflation. Trade goods. I would love. I want my vassals to park their troops in my provinces. <laughs> like, bring them over. Reduce them my revolt risk. Do it. I'm gonna come and fight your your rebels sometimes. Mm -hmm. I just give you my rebels for you guys to fight. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It's, it's a winning strategy. I feel like you guys, you know, you're getting bored. I want you guys to be entertained. I remember that very well. It's good. It was good. It was a good tactic. Did you guys notice that the truce timer, little green, green to red bar, is working again? I didn't realize that it stopped working. Yeah, I was. I don't just... even know what you're talking about. I usually, have too many truces, <laughs> so I have to mouse over everything anyway. Hmm. Big coalition wars. <laughs> Military tech three. I can taste you. I'm still on tech two. <laughs> Across the board. When I Before I left Arissa, I made them tech three. So they got a little bit of a something. I swear to God, if Arissa <sighs> comes back, I'm going to be pissed. Just, <laughs> that would be so good. Another <laughs> they just become the building. power. I mean, they do get a truce, right? So now they, they, have, can like, they have like 16 loans to deal with. I uh, feel like they're going to have a hard time. All right, my great leader died. Ruler, though. That's okay. No. What is my leader? A four four five, not bad. That's really good. <laughs> four four five? Yep. That's like thirteen points. That's really really good. Mm -hmm. He's forty four though. I don't need him dying on me. I have. I'm getting a. I'm getting nine points a month. You're getting thirteen. And my heir is a three three four, so that's good. Yep. Hang in there. Don't I'd die on me. Four. Any day. Oh, I need more improved relations over here. Oh, right. What, I won't be able wait, to What can I start building some buildings? Once I hit the technology level. Gotcha.
I can rival someone who has no army. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> what do you like think a, of the idea of uh, like a half annexation, half vassalization? Like I could do full annexation, but I'd have to wait for a little while for my diplo points to rise. But I could take two provinces and vassalize the other two. Right. Is there any reason that's ridiculously dumb? I mean, they won't like you, so it'll have to recover before you can uh, annex them. But, but that would be the same if I just did a, a vassalization of their whole country, right? That's probably well, the, true. Depending on your ideas, like to to yeah. to core something, it's twenty base um, monarch points, twenty base admin points. Okay. And they changed it in this patch. Now it's ten base diplomacy points to annex. So it depends. You know, do you want to pay twenty admin points per base tax or ten uh, diplomacy points per base tax? Hmm. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm asking. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost you 45. It's most likely going to cost you 45 diplomacy points to vassalize them, right? Like if you, if you take two provinces flat cost and to start with. Yeah, if you vassalize them and take two provinces, it's 45 diplo points, right? Yeah. What is it if you just flat out vassalize them all together? 45. Right. So Unless you have like a mission or something that you need oh, you to know, actually yeah. conquer that province, then you should probably just vassalize them. Fair. So I can say the province that I have a core on, or a claim on, I should say, from a mission. Then, for then free. The, yeah. Yeah, you could take that one. The, vassalize the, the rest. The claim will reduce the base administrative cost to 15 points, but it's still cheaper to vassalize. This okay. Is 10. Depends. Just depends on what you want to do. I like vassalization. They really, really reduce the cost a lot. Less yeah, aggressive expansion, now. too. It's interesting. Like, they've they've kind of double-backed on it. They they wanted to move people away from vassal feeding, but now you're allowed to take... Yeah. Well, there's huge vassals that you can get claims with. There's a different lead designer. Oh, well, good. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they have to switch that around, and I think, you know, they have slightly different ideas about what the balance should be. Anyway, I like vassals. I mean, I know, yeah, it can be gamey, but it's fun. Yep. Vassals are cool. Having vassals prevents blobbing, too. Like, you, you're still strong, but you're not just the big blob. Yeah. And historically, there was a lot of, like, vassals and personal unions and all kinds of nonsense like that. What's piety? Why would I? What's? Wait, what? Well, you're you're Sunni, right? You're Muslim. Or yeah. You're Shia. But whatever. So I'm high at, piety I, I can, is super good. religious. All right. I'm going to just. Be High biased. piety is better for war and stability, and low piety gives you slightly cheaper tech, I think. Yep. And you get more taxes and manpower. Gotcha. You, just, you don't want to be in the middle. You want to be on yep. one end or another, because in the middle you get nothing. Okay. Cool, I, I want a war, everybody. advantage from being on one side. Like, is, are there any negatives, or is it just pure nope. positives? All positives all around. On the right, you've got missionary strength, morale of armies, fort defense. On the oh, left, yeah. you've got... Taxes, man manpower, and tech cost. Well, right now I'm but pretty high in piety, so I might as well stick with it. Yep. Whichever direction you kind of lean, you'll want to go in that direction. Sounds good to me. All right, I won a war. I'm excited. <laughs> hey, I didn't know, but I'm allied with the Bengals, so things are going. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Cincinnati. <God>. Yeah, <laughs> oh, their teams are terrible. Oh. You said you said Bengals. I was thinking the music band. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but yes, the Bengals. Spitballing Should? here. Mm -hmm. If uh, right now there are seventeen points between where they will accept vassalization and when I can actually offer it, or sorry, when when they won't. Um, you think the fifty bonus from plus fifty bonus from doing an alliance would make up the difference there? No. All right. No, because there's only a few things. I actually made a. Excel spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> about offering. That's why we love you. Oh, that's and, good. Uh, I can show it to you later if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put it on the wiki, but basically, um, you can get plus ten from being friendly or threatened. You can get okay. direct relationship between your dip whatever your diplomatic reputation is. Mm -hmm. You can get it from trust, which is if yep. you like honor defensive calls to arms. And other than that, it really just comes down to um, having having a royal marriage. Right. And finally, your base tax compared to their base tax. And the formula is you take your base tax and divide it by 
the square of their total base tax. Jesus. Which is why you need a formula. You need a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what, what's what's the number show when you hover over offer vassalization? Uh, they're... What does it say? Like, like, base tax compared to you. Yeah, it's uh, Ethiopian base tax compared to this country is minus 19. Okay, so just just get bigger is all you need to do. Really? Maybe, okay. If you gain if you gain like 20 to 30 or maybe 40 base tax, they'll probably accept. Hmm. If, right. if the number was like negative 80, then it would take you like 500 base tax to overcome okay. the, pe the penalty. But you're, you're close. You're close enough. You just got to get a little bit bigger. Pegu is driving me crazy because it doesn't seem that big. But yeah, they do have the negative 72 for base tax. I'm like, oh, give me a break. So what you should do is you should, they're close enough. You should ally them, improve relations with them, get them high enough so that you can do it as soon as possible. And maybe you'll get into a war, but that'll get you trust, which will get you to offer it sooner. Okay. I'm just worried about allying them because they do border the Mamluks. Yeah, but if you're worried about that, why would you want to annex them? Because you would, bam if you're worried about the Mamluks, you would end up ordering them too. Yeah, but at least I would like own that land. So that would be what they'd take. If basically what I'm getting at is if the Mamluks were to like attack them now, I could just say, hey, Mamluks, good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and refuse the call to arms? Well, because I don't have an alliance with them yet because right. I, I, I'm worried about that happening. Well, you could always do the alarm went off, by the way. Do you want to pause it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anyway, this it, it's like a two province, three province minor, so I'm not super concerned about it, but I'd rather do it all in one fell swoop, you know, get the vassalization done, rather than risk the alliance uh, giving me a defensive call to arms against the Mamluks, and I'll lose the war anyway. At least I would have the guaranteed vassalization, and maybe the Mamluks won't attack. Anyway, mm -hmm. thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon.